This is an assembly guide for the Open Wave Pipe Logger Revision C hardware. The drill template in the lower right can be ignored in most instances. Start by placing the solder paste stencil over the CPU board. Line up the cutouts of the stencil with the component pads on the board. Apply solder paste to the top of the stencil and use a credit card or similar tool to smear the paste into the stencil openings. This should leave nicely applied solder paste blobs on each pad on the board. You could also do this manually using the solder paste syringe tip if you do not have a stencil. The first chip we'll place is the ATmega328P microcontroller. There's a black dot on top of the chip that should be matched up with the white dot on the pattern on the circuit board. Next place the 10,000 ohm resistors at positions R1, R2, R3, and R4. Orientation does not matter here, just make sure that both ends of the resistor are each touching one of the solder paste pads. Place the 1000 ohm resistors at pads R9 and R10. Again, the orientation of the resistors does not matter here. Place the real-time clock chip. This chip has a notch on one end, which should be oriented so that it points to the same end as the white dot on the circuit board pattern. Place the transistor on the pads labeled BJT. This can only be oriented in one way so that it matches up with the circuit board pads. Place 0.1 microfarad capacitors on pads C1, C2, and C3. Orientation does not matter here. Just make sure that the capacitor ends are each touching a solder pad. Position the read switch. Orientation does not matter here either. Begin preparing the power circuit board. Position the stencil and apply solder paste to the circuit board pads. Place electrolytic capacitors at positions C3 and C4. Orientation does matter here, so match up the capacitor shape with the pattern on the circuit board. Install the JST PH series battery connector. Updated versions of this circuit board will have two holes for directly soldering your own battery wires if you don't want to use JST connectors. Place the voltage regulator. The legs should match up with the pads on the board. Place a 0.1 microfarad capacitor at position C2. Orientation does not matter here. Place a 22 microfarad capacitor at position C1. Orient the capacitor so that the white bar is closest to the where the micro SD card holder will be. Place the green LED on the pad labeled LED2. There are green marks on one end of the LED that should be oriented away from the plus marking on the board pattern. The same is true for the red LED. Orient the green mark on the red LED so that it points away from the plus sign on the board. Place 510 ohm resistors on pads R7 and R8. Orientation does not matter here. Place the push buttons, which are also known as tactile switches. Orientation does not matter here, just match up the legs with the pattern on the board. Install the 100,000 ohm resistors at pads R1 and R2. Orientation does not matter here. Now install the pressure sensor on the MS5803 board. 
the sensor itself comes with solder on its pads already, so you don't need to add solder to the circuit board. Instead, apply a small amount of liquid or paste flux to the circuit board. Orient the MS5803 sensor so that the blue dot in the corner of the sensor matches the white dot on the circuit board in the lower right of the image here. All three circuit boards are ready to solder now. We use a toaster oven as a reflow oven to melt the solder. The peak oven temperature should not exceed 235 degrees Celsius. After soldering in the oven, we need to add the remaining parts. On the pressure sensor board backside, solder a 0.1 microfarad capacitor on pad C5. Here I use a soldering iron and solder paste. On the pressure sensor board, install the female headers into the receptacles, pointing down away from the pressure sensor. Solder each pin in place with soldering iron and solder wire. On the CPU board backside, add solder to the center pad of the backup battery pattern. Next, install the backup battery holder by soldering the two sides of the holder to the pads on the board. This holds a CR1220 sized lithium battery to run the real time clock. On the CPU board backside, also add the piezo buzzer by soldering its pads to the board. Orientation does not matter here. Add the 2x3 header for the programmer on the CPU board, with the pins pointing towards the top side of the board and soldering on the back side of the board. This header is used to burn the bootloader program onto the microcontroller in a later step. Install the long lead wire wrap headers on the CPU board with the long pins pointing to the top side of the board and then solder in place using a soldering iron. Similarly, on the power board, install the long wire wrap headers with pins pointing towards the top side of the board and solder them in place. This finishes the soldering assembly of the three circuit boards. Now take the CPU board by itself and attach the AVR programmer cable to the 2x3 pin header. Orientation matters here. The AVR programmer plug should have an arrow or mark on pin 1, which is the MISO line that is marked on the CPU circuit board. Power needs to be supplied to the microcontroller while burning the bootloader program, so we also switch on the power target switch on the programmer. After you have modified the boards.txt file as outlined in the written instructions, go into the Arduino software, go to the Tools menu, Board submenu, and choose the OWHL 8 MHz option from the list of boards. Then go to the Programmer submenu and choose USB Tiny ISP if that is the programmer you are using. Then in the Tools menu, you can choose Burn Bootloader at the bottom, and the bootloading progress should appear at the bottom of the window. Now attach the FTDI USB adapter between your computer and the OWHL's FTDI 1x6 header. 
Orientation matters here, so match up the markings on the FTDI board with the labels on the OWHL board. Black ground are labeled on one end of the header, and the opposite end is labeled DTR. Now we will upload the SetTime Serial.ino program to the OWHL. This will allow you to program the onboard real-time clock, and the backup battery will ensure that the clock continues to run even after you remove the other power sources. After the upload completes, open the Arduino serial monitor. This will show you the clock's current time, and then let you enter a new time in the prescribed format. Hit enter to upload the new time. If you mess up, you can always re-enter the time in the serial monitor window. With the clock now set, upload the main OWHL.ino program. This is the program that logs the pressure and temperature data. After uploading, it starts collecting data automatically whenever power is applied from either the FTDI adapter or the main battery pack. Either before or after you upload the main OWHL.ino program, reassemble the three circuit boards and install a microSD card so that the OWHL can start collecting data. After you complete the upload with the FTDI adapter still attached, you can open the Arduino serial monitor window and see the output of the OWHL program. My pressure readings here are slightly below 1000 millibar because I am recording this a few hundred feet above sea level. 